while I look on Google for a possibility for a gentle tattoo. I look on Google for a All right, I think we are live. So, uh, let's go ahead and say hello and welcome everyone to second cast in a row for today, for battle at least. Uh, that's right, I am casting with battle today for this scavenge game. Uh, welcome to your first scavenge match battle. Thank you for the uh, introduction, of course, welcoming you to the uh, realm that is scavenge, which I know fuck all about, so if I do say something stupid, please don't correct me. Correct Prodigy and blame him for bringing me. That's okay. <laughs> I will correct you and make fun of you properly. In a very professional manner, so don't worry about that. No, I'm kidding. Here um, at uh, Comp Leffert Casting, we thrive ourselves on professionalism. Absolutely, the highest level of professionalism. Brought to you every day on L4D2TV.net. And so today, it looks like we're going to be seeing... Um, this is a lower bracket match, and I think it's lower bracket semifinals right now, or maybe even one step before that. Not complete. Yeah, round three, but... What does that mean? I think it's quarterfinals, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, the teams will be We Make You Rage against After the Groot. And I think we've seen We Make You Rage a few times, um, at least once. We, I believe they were the first ones who played against IA in the first scavenge match we did a cast of. And they are Kaluminati, Ray-Ban, Jazz, B2, and Raveloff. And they're going to be playing against After the Groot's El Fuerte, Trend, Mividia. Nvidia, I guess that is. Unnamed, Hebus86, Brain, and Boost. Oh, that's just a really long team roster. I don't know who's actually going to be playing. I do like how you tried to put an accent on Nvidia, though. Nvidia. Well, it's like Nvidia is how it's spelled, but with an M. So, it's like Intel, except not actually taking the name of a product. It's like Intel, but considerably smarter. Indeed. Not that Intel's an idiot or anything, but these are the brightest two in the fucking shed, I'll give them that. Indeed. Well, we can take that. We can take that. Starting things off professionally. Yeah, we, we, we can deal with that. I mean, Intel won't mind. And if he does mind, he's not online to really give a shit. Indeed. Alright, so we had been told that both teams were in lobby, but, um... I guess I'll tell them that we're actually ready. So, things should be starting pretty quick. We are going to start off on rooftop once again for about the 50th time. Um, but that's just how this tournament works. The other two maps lined up are Motel, which is Dark Carnival 1, and Sugar Mill, which is Hard Rain 2. And I have to say, I wish the order was switched around on those, because I think Sugar Mill is a lot more exciting of a map than Motel, but it uh, should be pretty interesting anyway. Motel's, Motel's actually kind of hard to do, because it's just so hard to wipe a survivor team. Um, I know it's, what Motel looks like. Obviously from playing versus, but mainly from watching Antero's YouTube videos. <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like what Antero will do on those videos and other pub stars is they just sit on that roof and they can clear everybody. And that's, that's sort of how the map works. It's like you can't get great separation plays. There's maybe like two or three places on the map that you can actually take somebody out of line of sight. And so it just ends up being uh, all about getting a good time on Survivor. So it's actually it's actually a more difficult map to play because of that. You can't just say, oh, we'll do better on Infected. It's like, no. You have to be extremely fast on Survivor. That's interesting. I mean, I've, I've called like a couple of games from Scavenger's Tournament, but I, admittedly I haven't really followed it much. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes on, because obviously when you, know, you get like the dead center finale and uh, the versus cast, you, sort of, you, know, you get to see the tank roll in every sort of couple of minutes and shit. Yeah. So yeah, of course no tanks in this, uh, so it, it leads to a very different sort of a strategic game. And AKs. But it's the, the nice thing about Scavenge is that uh, it forces players to move very quickly, so a lot of where you see uh, damage happening and kills happening is, is from players just trying to move quickly. Which, you know, if you're playing versus, you try to get it in before the tank comes or whatever, you try to get cans in quickly, but uh... You know, when it comes down to it, you can just sit there and fight out the tank slow, if you want. It seems to have, like, um, a different sort of libido to it, almost. Whereby, you know, the, the point of the game is, oh, as you imagine, get cans in, in generator, win game. But it seems to have a lot more uh, strategic sort of personality to it than a lot of people give it credit for. Like, as you said, you know, 
Indeed. You can just move around quickly, which is obviously a good thing to do. Move around, get the canter as fast as you can. But then there's also the uh, the prospect of you know getting separated and essentially getting shafted because one person has rushed off in one direction for too long, and the rest of his teammates are like I don't know, picking their noses back at the generator, thinking, "Where's my can?" <laughs> Indeed. Or you know, you lose track of some cans right there, and there's a big multi spit or all sorts of things like that. So we'll have to see how this game goes. We have done the map restart, so we should be going live pretty quickly here. I believe after the Groot is going to be taking Survivor first. And it looks like they have uh, El Philo. Two, I don't even know how to pronounce that name. Brain, Rame, and Two. Um, against We Make Your Rages, B2, Jazz, Rayben, and Kaluminati. Now, I know most of you guys watching have probably seen uh, plenty of Rooftop if you've been watching our cast, but uh, for the sake of battle, who has not been seeing very much scavenge, we probably aren't going to see any SI attack go in until all of these upper ground cans have been put in the generator. And um, <laughs> I do find it amusing how you failed to uh, pronounce B-Rain when it's just Brain. I... I thought I did call him Brain. I tried to say Brian at first. B Rain, I was like, what the fuck? B Rain, oh my god. Brain. <laughs> anyway, early boom gonna sack right here, just gonna try to get a spitter up instead of that, I believe. We don't have a spec hut or anything, we do have a three cap with Charger, Smoker, and Hunter. And as you can see, they're all just sitting around near Helipad right there. So yeah, they're gonna wait for survivors to move onto low ground cans. Four, five can, yeah, five cans going straight in, which is a relatively good oh, start, wow. as you said. Ram actually going to be going for those low ground cans, moving very quickly there. Smoker getting the pull. Charger is looking for it. Wow. Oh. Wow. What a quick clear. Great work by team after the group. Brain actually getting that kill there just as she was going off the ledge. That is so clutch. That charger was robbed. Had Absolutely. That. Yeah, it looked like such a free setup right there that Smoker wasn't getting cleared, but uh, they focused that charger and really took him down. You can sort of see as well from, um, from the scavenge players as they move the cans around, they're extremely quick at doing it and they don't keep them all piled up. Obviously for the, uh, for the spitter to come in and just spit on a massive pile of them. Indeed, we saw a spit attempt right there, but the spit was a little late, Hunter a little early I think. And Boomer's just going to try to knock some cans off, um, which is legal in this, for those of you who are not aware. But it's just going to separate a can a little bit. Now not a lot of SI up. Uh, Zoe not going to split for any low cans. But Survivor's making pretty good time right here. They actually have quite a few low cans. They've got hard three on the bottom to get. They've got the long two by Helipad and close two as well. A lot of cans gone. We've got 13 of 21. Well, 14 of 21 already. And yeah, the SI attack is coming up. They do have that spitter that's currently pre-spawned running around. He's quite a distance away from the... Uh, Scavenge players are a bit more uh, handy with the aerial spit. Yeah, they just really want to keep that alive too. Just going for a delay spit with it though, I think the rest of their cappers are going to want to set up for a death shard on these hard threes. Zoe is going down, but Smoker and Charge are missing their spawns. Here comes the pull, and the charge should land right here. Nice oh death shard by uh, Raben, I believe that was. Death charge number two is successful. Indeed, not gonna mess that up. But you know, these are the last cans right here, so survivors should still be making a pretty good time. As I don't have anything except this spitter right here. Oh, a can does get thrown into a spit, but Lewis does pick it up really quickly and get it out of there. Indeed. The last four cans as well. We might see some spawns coming in to do a final delay hit. We did just see a natural horde, but they do have a pipe bomb for that, and wow. That is it. Five minute, 40 seconds left on the clock, uh, which we will be using to determine which team wins the round, basically. It's not bad at all. I mean, it's surprising, you know, from my own experience of attempting to play Scavage once or twice, um, just how quickly these teams move around the map and actually get all these cans in. Yeah, it certainly is. There's a lot of juggling, you'll see. And things like that. Going for a quick death charge attempt, I guess? But actually, just getting mowed down right there, ooh, that's not good. That's a charger dying late. Yeah, um, that's the really gonna... the, uh, the auto shop ends really giving their... Uh... They're feeling towards the charger there. Survivor team splitting up a huge amount right here, though. Not a good decision by Zoe, who goes to hard three alone. And oh, wow, what a hunter intercept with the 12 damage pounce right there. On to Lewis. This actually looks absolutely terrible for We Make You Rage right now, getting way too bullheaded. Um, I mean, honestly, that's going to be pretty much the round. That smoke would do him work as well. Almost going for that second ledge hang on uh, 
on Francis, but he does skip over the ledge. Bill is now majorly separated as well. He's got a lot of cans coming in. You know, maybe I was a little bit uh, too quick to say that was the end of the round. We, of course, aren't seeing any charges up. They've gotten hard three. They've gotten most of the far low ground cans up to high ground, but they need to make sure they don't get spit on. There is this spitter up, and they're tossing so many cans next to that generator. Spitter is going to go for it, and it's up to Lewis to save all of these. No, making a bad decision. That's going to be too lit. Maybe even more. That can's just about to pop, but no, Zoe does save the others. There's a down going out of that, though, which isn't bad. But, I mean, I guess the survivors now are going to just leave him down while they... No, they are going to pick him up. A lot of can separation, though. And, uh, yeah, the spitter isn't up anymore, so that'll gift the survivors a bit more. Indeed. Honestly, Survivor Flick looking a little disorganized here. They're pretty much just throwing cans up to upper ground. There's so many cans on the floor right now. But they've got two shots, so they're probably just going to like mass pour these as soon as they can. Zoe doing a nice job juggling cans into herself. That is Kaluminati there on the generator. And here comes a boom. Maybe going to be able to get some sort of a can pop. Meanwhile, Jockey on the other side of the map getting great separation. And Survivors is going to be delayed on their pours completely. This might actually be a ledge hang, but no, it looks like it's going to get cleared. Bad though, it did reduce. Uh, oh well, Francis has now popped his A shot and he is going to start running up. But, uh, that boomer popped it pretty well as well. It, when it uh, did pop, eventually it popped a lot of the cans in <laughs> every direction. Like that. Indeed. With boomer surprise, that just looked fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Survivors uh, not actually getting great time anymore. I mean, they've got a lot of cans up here. But um, it, it seems like they're getting delayed every time they go to pour. However, they are at like five minutes right now. If they can get these last four cans in quickly, they could actually take this round. Zoe pouring just three more. No, two more cans to get in right here. Oh, oh no. This is so close. Oh, they're not going to get it, it seems. Indeed. So close, though. Well, no, just barely under by about ten seconds. Uh, but a very close round, nonetheless. Yeah, it's looked like they got off to a really shaky start. I mean, as you said, there was a lot of separation. There was that ledge hang as well. I think they went about, about 20 seconds that round. Indeed. I... And, of course, our HUD's not even going to show us the correct times. I don't think it was actually... That just said it was, like, less than a second of difference, but I don't think that was correct. Uh, I'll be writing down the times for these next rounds so we don't screw up like that. We do have another charger as well. Boom, oh, going for the very quick death, death charge. charge! Wow, right off the bat, going to lose Kaluminati to that charger by Ray M. Uh, nice job by After the Groot right there. And I believe they took the first round as well. Yeah, poor Boomer. He's jumping around thinking, please pop me. And well, there's a nice separation smoke. Indeed. That's going to take a while to get cleared. I guess Bill has it right here, but uh, once again, we're probably going to see We Make You Rage try to use this downtime to split up as much as they can, get as many cans to high ground as possible. They've only got three players, but uh, if they can get enough cans up quick enough, they could still be able to get 21 on this map. Gotta be careful though, they do have that spitter up now. Indeed, with a hunter, most teams like to go for a burn play with these hunter spitters, and now would be a great time to do it. They need to get in quickly though, putting in the sp spit first. It does land on the cans, but Lewis in for the quick saves right there. Nice legwork by Jazz. Getting those cans out from underneath the hunter. There's another charger up though, so there is another death charge possibility, but the survivors are doing really well here with only three survivors. I mean, they're putting in a lot of cans extremely quickly. The yes, SI do seem a bit uh, fractured in how they want to capitalize here, because the survivors are just spilling up in every direction. Indeed, honestly, they should probably just save for when the survivors go to hard three, which is those three cans next to the jockey down there. Um, probably one of the hardest sets of cans to get. Jockey trying to get some sort of a quick cap on the Lewis. He's just getting baited out and chipped so hard. They do have their full SI hit now. God damn it, I need my spec card. Smoothly <laughs> charging Boomer and that jockey who is heavily chipped as uh, Sim pointed out. Yeah, of course there only are there are only three survivors left and three cappers. And here comes a charger for a death charge attempt, trying to go for free though. Not getting anything at all, and Boomer is going to go in. A nice separation pull. Jockey can actually intercept that. Jockey he does in, indeed. Guys. And Lewis having to make a quick decision about who to go after. He goes to clear the jockey. And that is an in cap onto Bill up top. Boomer maybe going to try to set up to pop some cans off. No, he's just going to ladder block. I like that Boomer style. Lewis horribly hoarded down there as well now. Indeed. He's going to take the horde off of Bill though. Which will help him at least get that pickup quickly. And of course the survivors can't always just kit up again. 
Yeah, I'm gonna throw a Molotov. It's a shame there's only three commons left and the Molotov finally got thrown out just to help uh, Paul Lewis who was getting pounded on by common down there. Indeed. But we do see. Them. Yeah, Charge, Spit, Smoker, and Hunter, I think, so this could be a burn attempt. But, um, I think, yeah, they aren't going to choose to hit on it. Survivors still have to go get hard three and close two, so we'll probably see some sort of a low ground hit. Uh, as I have to be careful, though, if they waste this hit right here. Oh, going for the pull, and it is going to land. Charger not going to be able to get that death charge, though, because the ledge hang goes in too quickly. He needs to stay alive. Um, this can be a huge delay if they just work it properly. A lot of separation. Hunter jumping around as well, looking for Indeed. that cap. They could just finish this strike cap, yeah. Charger looking charge for the charge. That is a death charge, and that yeah. is going to be the end of the half. I like that charger style, running around like a headless chicken, trying to avoid all forms of chips. Both survivors going around the same way around that generator, getting caught in the death charge. Indeed. It's only, white, only 16 cans put in. 16 cans and... 3 minutes 16 seconds, so uh, if team after the group can make a better time than that at 16 the win, or just get that 17th can. So it's going to be up to We Make You Rage to try to get some death charges in here. They really need to get a wipe before 16, otherwise there's pretty much no way for them to take this. Early death charge really sort of um, hindering the survivors a lot that round. After they call that Definitely. death charge, it's a case of, okay, we need to get as many cans as possible. A lot of separation going in. As a result, caught, like, uh, I guess a premature wipe for them. We do see a pull attempt here, but no, that's not going to put Zoe anywhere for that charger get a, to get a death charge. He's just running around like crazy right here, and honestly, he's going to get picked off. No, actually, Bill missing the pick right there. Smoker almost going to get his tongue. Might well, be able to still do something him. with it. If they chase him down, that smoker is like following him around pretty covertly as well, just to try and get the intercept. And as uh, you did mention before, uh, before the cast went live, you do see some interesting setups in terms of pulls for death charges. Yeah, we definitely do. And trying to throw Molly at this side, but not going to land. They did light a gas can onto that smoker though, which is not very good at all. Smoker really looking for a pull right here, but survivors are just going to run to the other side of the map basically, and Lewis taking down the smoker. Charger is still up though. No, he's decided to commit suicide. Go for a decent wall. Probably not a bad idea. They should really lose the, the rest of these SI as well though. Oh wow, he got a despawn. Yeah, he just despawned himself. That's uh, that was pretty cool. Because you can despawn when you're not actually charging in the charge animation. Indeed. So I was making pretty brisk pace. We're already up to 10 cans. Well, 9 cans at the moment. But um, the SI of course still... Ooh, there comes a charger for the second attempt of a death <laughs> charge, but he gets a uh, wall of AK-47 for his troubles. Indeed, yeah, so not really any damage out. Uh, we only see 7 damage on the board for We Make You Rage, and this should just be pretty much a free run in for uh, after the group. There's a spit being employed, but it's not even going to hit the cans. Trying to pre-spit there, Lewis throws one into the spit, and he's not even noticing it. Wow, that's a burn. That actually might be a 2 burn or more. That is a double burn, and it's going to delay the can pours by Bill. So... It's amazing yeah, how much you have to take into consideration when you're actually doing this. I mean, you know, throwing cans around is one thing, but then throwing cans around and then taking into consideration that cans are already lit and they spit around and death spit bottles. It's like you could essentially screw your team over with one missed throw. Indeed, yeah, there's a lot of things to think about, especially when you're juggling those cans. And there are only 12 cans in. That was a very good burn for We Make You Rage. But if they don't get, like, a really good attack with this next charger setup, do have that it's smoke as well. pretty good to be... Indeed, they're looking for something onto Francis, it looks like. Probably gonna hit on this ladder right here. Does Charger even have a spawn though? No, Tong gets Lewis and gets cleared very quickly, and now it's up to a Charger alone with this spitter. A lot of these uh, cans seem to be in relatively dangerous areas as well. Really sort of prime death charge areas for the SI to capitalize on, but the survivors do still have um, four survivors up. A lot of these cans, because of the uh, separation and spawn time, is seemingly throwing up to uh, more safer areas pretty comfortably. Although I noticed a lot of the survivors, uh, the can's just down sort of where Lewis is now underneath them. They seem to be like uh, an area where the survivors really don't go alone. Yeah, or you know, at least not when spawns are up. And wow, actually nice jockey right there. Sometimes that can be a death jockey, but you know, all they have to do is pour in this last can right here. And it's going to be over. There's a charger going for that last delay. He gets a punch, but no, he's just going to get juked afterward. And there goes the final pour. So another round going to after the group. 
much all. I mean, it's confusing as hell being my first time here. I was like, what do I watch? What am I looking for? Am I looking for damage? Am I looking for death charges? I don't get it. Yeah, there's really, there can be so many things going on at once. There's sometimes we have to call out one thing on one side of the map, and then there's a boomer popping some cans off the ledge on the other side of the map. But, you know, I feel like that round pretty much came down to, uh, we make your rage losing Zoe so quickly. And I have to say, Kaluminati is probably one of their best players. He always seems to be doing these uh, really nice solo plays and whatnot that we can commend him for. So losing him in early is pretty, pretty bad for them. We do see a lot of, uh, once again, a lot of cans going in quickly. Uh, just the boomer getting rid of himself. But they do, once again, have that charger and that smoker for the, uh, for the setups. So they are banking on them, uh, them early death just to sort of really hinder the survivors a bit. Because, I mean, it's a lot easier to sort of run around like maniacs when you've got four survivors. But when you're down to three, and of course, there can be three cappers in an attack. That's uh, Indeed. pretty dangerous to be separating and just rushing around. Well, and of course, for oh, we are seeing a death charge attempt come in right here. But he goes in solo, and Francis gets that juke. That's going to be one less charger. And um, the other thing that Infected have to think about is if they do go in for an early attack without trying to get a death charge... It, and you lose all four SI at once, it gives the survivors permission to just run all over the map and get so many cans. Kind of like we just saw right here, we saw a huge amount of cans being thrown up to high ground. And we did see that spit go in, but nice moves by Lewis and Zoe to clear all of the cans out of it. So um, that's going to be a huge amount of cans coming in right here. I think we've got like seven cans coming in. They only have five left on low ground to go get. That's hard three. And the close to, and there's a spitter sitting right next to that one. But actually, artillery spit going in on the generator right there. Nice aim, and the can gets thrown into spit. But Lewis does get that save right there. Okay, amount of damage going on to Francis, but um, honestly, yeah, not a whole lot going on. Yeah, with can. Indeed, it's time for hard three. And we see Zoe taking it alone. There aren't really any SI to go on this. Just a hunter and a spitter. Not what they need at all. Um, so those cans are being thrown up top very quickly. And artillery spit is going to go in on those cans. But it's not going to land. Survivors see it coming. Oh, it actually lands on the pounce. Pretty nice. But uh, all the low ground cans have been taken. Nice death charge on the other side of the map onto B2 right there. As he goes for that last can. But all of the cans are up right here. Once this Jackie goes down, it will be clear. Kaluminati going to pour on a shot. And wow, six minute and four second time right there. That's a great recovery from uh, the previous round. It certainly is. They made great time. That's even better than after the Groot got on their first round, getting 16. What's it do? Is it, is it five rounds of one map and then we switch on to the next map and then five rounds yeah. of that? And... It's best of five though. So uh, if after the Groot wins this, we will be switching to Motel. Tiny. Boom goes in though and does get a double boom. That's uh, going to be a pretty good delay, honestly. An early boom like that can really slow the survivors from getting these upper ground cans. And when you need to beat a six minute time, uh, every second counts. Yeah, you can't really uh, really expect to mess around and deal with all these commas that trail in. I mean, you've got to get the Indeed. cans in while avoiding death charges and, of course, um, can spits and boomer pops on cans as well. So it looks like we've got that Hunter Smoker Charger set up for the infected once again. And survivors are going to move to these corner four cans. Smoker and Charger looking for it. You know, they could honestly just pull Lewis right there, but not finding spawns for themselves, it looks like. And so those four cans are going to go in pretty much without contest. You know, on the other hand, the longer they wait to attack, uh, basically makes the survivors move a lot slower for a lot of the map right here. And it looks like we might see some sort of an attempt onto Zoe right here. Getting the pull. Charger needs to get out of the way and just take the charge. Oh, he gets clear. Wow. After the group getting another amazing last second clear onto a death charge. I have to say, a little sloppy by We Make Your Rage, not really getting that uh, charger in there quickly. He was actually kind of delaying the pull. Meanwhile, survivors are splitting all over the map, getting hard three right now. They got Alley two, and it looks like Zoe is going solo for close two. Making good time. I mean, they still do have 10 cans to put in. And that timer is ticking up extremely quickly with that uh, that charger and smoker with the fail of the death charge as well. That gave the survivors a lot of uh, guts basically to just push around and Indeed. pick up a lot of these cans. There are two more low ground cans. Uh, the far two that Lewis is thinking about going for, but he is going to wait for a brain right there to help him. You see that smoke as well. Like uh, he was poised to go in if Lewis did come in by himself. It's we do see. A delay on the can. 
Yeah, we did see a quick pull right there next to the generator, but there's no spit or anything to go on it. Smoke is just, I guess, doing what he can to delay since all the low ground cans are on top. Wow, these pours are coming in so quickly. This is going to be close. They need about 20 seconds of delay right here. Charger does get a delay on a pour, but Ray, Ray M in there to get that delay. Hunter getting a nice two cap. Oh my gosh, this is so close, but the pour goes in. A two second win. That was like a three second win by after the Groot. And the teams are going to have to switch now to the next map. And we are going to get kicked out of the server until that happens. But wow, what a close round. I can't believe that. That was just under three seconds difference between the teams. Crazy just how much the SI are basically frantically going in there trying to prevent those um, cans going in just to take it over. Indeed. And you see the charger getting the charge and the hunter jumping on two different people and the jockey going in to screw things up as well. But I mean, I guess at that point you can just leave one person being charged and leave another one being jockeyed and just get that cannon just for the, uh, to secure the win. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, after the group made great decisions there, getting those last cans in. It was a good attempt by We Make You Rage, but, uh, you know, they really just lost it on those uh, first couple of rounds. That was that was their best time on that very last round, but you know, on those first two, just eating that early death charge onto Cluminati was no good. And uh, you know, not really making great time on the other maps, letting a lot of cans get burned. Or not other maps, other rounds. We do have some uh, interesting games coming up though. I mean, well, interesting maps. I mean, as you said, uh, the motel is a bit of a pain in the ass for the SI to really do significant work. Because I mean all you need is a hunting rifle sort of around the billboard area and got a great deal of uh, map coverage. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, just about anywhere. Uh, and you start out with tier two. It can depend on what guns you get. Um, but, you know, give, if you get the sniper, if you get the SCAR, or an M16, and even the AK in some cases, you can get just range clears on just about everybody. I really wish we were playing Sugar Mill next, because I'm going to be disappointed if uh, this ends at Motel and we don't get to see Sugar Mill at all. Because honestly, Sugar Mill is way more interesting to watch, in my opinion, with those, uh, I mean, you have to go up into the high rise, you can always get ledge caps there, and death charges, and all sorts of crazy things. If the Sugar Mill one, I guess it would be map two, sort of just yes. before somebody would take the stairs. Yep, it's, it spans from all the way on the top of the high rise there, like next to the elevator, to uh, back just after the drop. Oh, okay, I get you. where that is. So yeah, it's a pretty big playing area, and you have to go in both directions on the map pretty far. The motel is going to go about from the, the first overpass. Just under the first overpass is where the first cans are, and all the way up to the, uh, the room you go through, the motel room you go through to take the drop, finally. So it's, it's a pretty long spread as well, but uh, once again, very open. Yeah, it's like, it's great because, I mean, the SI can spawn anywhere. I mean, there's so many rooms the SI can spawn into, but then again, Indeed. you know, any room they can spawn into, the HR can penetrate through as well. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, I mean, well, a lot of the times where we actually see separation is on a survivor going into one of those rooms, and you get a nice jockey into, like, a back room, and then maybe get some punches onto him or a lot of spit damage in a can burn. Because uh, those cans actually will do a huge amount of damage to an in-cap survivor, and they are in server. So it looks like we can go ahead and join up and get you guys some action. Just kidding, watching Left 4 Dead cannot actually get you any action. Oh, sick burn. Okay. I'm sure there's a couple of people who joke off to some casts that we've done. <laughs> Maybe your cast. I hope not any of my cast. You know there's some questionable person who's <laughs> been uh, leaving your VOD on while they quote sleep at night, unquote. <laughs> Use it as foreplay for their imaginary oh. girlfriends. And it looks like putting in a map restart, even though nobody's really left the safe area or anything, they could just start right here probably. But, yeah, we are going to see the map restart, and after the Groot, it looks like we'll be taking Survivor first once again. Never mind, I do have confirmation that um, casts do turn people on. Oh boy. Bandit, I love you. But 
there you go, Sim. If you uh, need a masturbatory aid or you need help for a masturbatory aid, apparently you just have to record my voice and put it over a cast. And that sounds, women, sounds pretty great good. to me. Women will fall upon you. I will try it next time. All right, and the map is pretty much restarted. I don't know what it's waiting for, but we only see a 2-2 setup from the infected right here, so we might be seeing a quick boomer sack or something of the sort. Looks like Smoker and, I want to say Jockey? No, Smoker Hunter are the other two SI. So uh, the normal path we'll see from survivors here is for them to move out to overpass first and try to get the four cans in that direction, since those are the longest four cans on the map. Oh yeah, they're quite a distance away, aren't they, from the rest of the, uh, rest of the cans. We've got to go like all the way around under the underpass as well to get the ones on top, because it does seem that the uh, ladder up to the billboard... Oh no, it's not fenced off, it's only fenced off in uh, survival. survival. Now, you'll notice the smoker and hunter are both setting up towards those last two cans, and you'll usually see let them try to get a play as the survivors are moving for those last two cans. Try to get some separation around that bend. And we did see a nice boomer pop very early. It does uh, seem the whole four survivors are going for them cans though, but now we do see that 2-2 two -two split. Indeed. And it looks like Hit is coming in. Oh, Smoker getting juked out by Coach right there. They really need to um, make sure they can get that pull, but no, getting juked once again. And he's going to grab that last can. Smoker does finally get the pull. Hunter coming for the intercept, but that clear is just too quick from Ellis right there. Spitter not set up anywhere to uh, get a burn at this point. I got it. I got this one. Reloading. However, so this is going to be the overpass cans. They also got the two from on top of the overpass near billboard. So pretty sizable uh, grab for the survivor team right here. They do still have Hunter and Spitter and Jockey up. So it's really on We Make You Rage to get a burn play right here, but Spitter not really ready as this jockey goes in solo. They could have had that. I mean, there was a nice three cans. Oh, there is the burn going down, but the cans are safely out of the spit puddle. It's a bit of a shame if that Spitter had been a bit closer, he would have had four cans. Oh, they've thrown two into spit. So close. It takes, it takes almost three seconds for a can to burn in uh, Vanilla Scavenge, so you can, you can leave them in spit for a pretty good amount of time. Don't need to worry about them too much. But yeah, We Make You Rage kind of going in very uh, ad hoc right here, I'd have to say. One SI at a time on these heads. Coach eating some spit damage to try to move this cane around. And oh, survivors, no, yeah, survivors have gone ahead and taken close motel as well. Honestly, I'm not sure what is left for me. We Make You Rage at this point. Looking for that hit onto Ellis right there. We did see it pounce and spit at the generator. But it was cleared very quickly, Ellis getting out of that room, and now there's just a charger and a smoker setting up all alone. Not really going to be able to do much. I see what you mean when it comes to uh, finding spawns for the SR. They can find the spawns, but you can't really play on them. Although if that charger does land behind their coach could be in uh, a lot of separation. Indeed, putting the spit on top of the cans actually, but Rochelle's going to just clear Ooh, that. Oh, cap! Very nice two cap. And Laboom on top. This should be a pretty good delay, actually. Oh, Can almost getting sent over that fence. Meanwhile, Charger charging out in the other direction, trying to get that recharge after the boom. And he's just going to go for some punches onto Ellis, it looks like. Oh, that should be a Can burn down there. Nice work by the Spitter. Wow, that was actually a surprisingly effective attack. Nice double cap going, really capitalizing on that separation. Can burn going on top of it, but... Uh... I don't know, I mean, the Spitter could have actually gone for the cans near the generator as well. They were all piled up there, and Ellis was still dealing with that charger. Indeed, but you know, in the in the long run, I think just any burn is probably good enough. You notice that one's uh, one that they're going to have to climb all the way up to the top for. So uh, it should give the SI another chance to hit anyway. Going for the 1k in a corner right here with two survivors, and it looks like they're going for the hit. They do get a pull onto Coach, but Hunter is not going to make that intercept. Before they clear, however, Jockey trying to finish the 2-cap. Wow, Survivor's just being bounced back and forth right here. So it's going to be a... Uh... Yeah, just a little bit of delay. But the SI are going to be down right here. These are the last two cans coming in. Coach kind of throwing a little too far for Rochelle to get that, but Ellis should get this final pour. Yeah, it's a little bit too short. That is the final round. Or the final can of the round, anyway. 
So a few minutes of mine, I mean, uh, from what was just said in spec chat, mm -hmm. it seems that five minutes is a good sort of um, respectable time for this. So I mean, I guess three minutes uh, isn't bad. But there was a lot of delay that went in with that two cap. Yeah, I don't feel like the survivor team took the fastest path right there for that map. Or, uh, and of course that two cap delay was quite huge. One thing I want to point out is we did see, I believe, El Philo. There was a cane stuck under one of the buses. Um, that the survivors couldn't grab, and they actually threw a pipe bomb onto the can to get it out from under the bus, which I thought was really cool. Just wanted to point out. But yeah, uh, it's now up to We Make Your Rage to try to get a better survivor time. Apparently I'm more handsome than Jeff. Thank you, Ma. Battle, you're more handsome than everyone. There we go. So nice boomer pop coming out from uh, We Make Your Rage right there. It's going to help them out a lot. They're probably going to try to rush these canes before um, the SI gets spawns. But you know, the SI not really looking like they're interested in hitting long right there. Just kind of looking for some separation onto Ellis right now. And there is light separation, but I think Coach has the cover. So it looks like they're really going to put all of their eggs in a uh, in a spit play. All of their eggs in that basket anyway. And there's a hunter pre-spawning on roof. Um, they could trigger this at any time. And here comes the pounce going in, trying to land on Coach right here. Not going to get anything. There is a pull, though. It gets cleared very quickly, but the spit completely missing all of the cans. Huge fumble by, uh, after the group right there. See what I mean by putting all your eggs into one basket, going for that massive spit burn. As a result, they didn't get it. And there's a lot of cans there ready to go in, which will bump up that time quite considerably. Indeed. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's a little risky for survivors to grab this many cans. I see a lot of teams choose not to grab billboard like we just saw that last round. Uh, because it can be a huge number of cans and if there is a burn, it's just absolutely terrible. Oh wow! Separation pounds onto Rochelle as she tries to get the two cans and Jenner in a, a motel room right there. And this can take a long time for survivors to clear. Probably going to be an in cap on the Kaluminati right there. Ellis not really getting the clear properly. He's trying to wall it, he does finally get the wall. And Jockey Smoker probably going to try to follow up on that. Getting an intercept pull, no, not quite going to happen. And Jockey actually does land onto Ellis right there. Does take her into the bathroom, so that's actually going to be great delay. We do see that pull landing onto Nick. Meanwhile, Coach is boomed at the generator. It's a lot of work, a lot of damage. Indeed, Kaluminati managed to get that clear onto the Jockey from NCAP. It's a lot of delay though, I mean you've seen about 20 seconds tick down and no cans going in due to Coach being heavily boomed and getting pounded on by commons. Indeed, uh, however, you know, if they can just take down one more SI attack, they should be able to get all of the cans in during the downtime. This hunter's just walking around, finally getting picked, but uh, Ellis not choosing to go for any extra cans at this point. So have to be careful of separation, they do only have uh, once these cans go in do have those two ones at the at the top to take as well. Yeah, they really just need to get uh, these SI taken down and then they should be able to just get these last three cans in very quickly and take the round. But uh, there is that close. hunter up. There is a spitter up. Hunter should just be killed so quickly he has no health left. But there is a charge spit up right here. Spitter might be able to do a separation spit onto this can. Wow, going for it, but Rochelle is there to grab. There's a lot of fire all over the map, but Ellis is just going to take in these last three cans. This should be the round. They just need to keep Ellis clear so we can pour and keep that charger from killing anyone. It looks like they will take, yeah, they will take the win off that. Yeah, nice job by We Make Your Ridge. You know, they had that in cap in the room for such a long time, but uh, as you can see, this map just really comes down to that survivor time. And We Make Your Ridge did a much better path, I think. And of course, they did not get the, any cans burned at all. You can see how much damage these uh, these double caps do. When they catch the survivors off guard, you see a lot of damage going in. I mean, any longer may have even resulted in a death had it been, you know, a hunter that was in that room, as opposed to a jockey. Indeed. I guess, um, I guess there's a bit more survivability here with no real death charge areas, but there is that, uh, that probability for massive separation. And as a result, you know, big splits equal big damage, which as a result either forces someone to commit a set of pills that they don't have any, they've got to commit their medkits, which slows them down for another, you know, three to five seconds again. Yeah, it really becomes a game of sort of like optimizing your, your survivor decisions. It's like, do I take the medkit now? Do I take the pills now? Can we separate right now? All sorts of things like that. Nice double and... going out though. 
Yeah, a much later one, um, but We Make Your Rage still looking like they want to hit on these two cans. This boom could actually help them. Coach doing his best to bait out that hit. And it looks like Smoker actually not going to spawn right there. I'm not completely sure what they're going to be doing with this setup. They do have uh, that spitter once again. After the Groot, still honestly not being very fast about getting these cans, and it looks like once again they're going to skip build. No, it looks like Nick is going for Billboard 3. They do have uh, all their SI up. They do have a Smoker, Jockey, uh, Hunter, and I believe that's a Spitter running around as well, so they might be looking for that, uh, maybe banking on that massive can light. And this would be a great time to make the hit happen if they can get anything on it. But you know, they don't have that charger. Cans are now looking a little bit safer. Hunter is going in, looking for the Spit right here. We have a 3 cap landing. But the, the spit, spit short. Oh wow, spit was short. They went for an artillery spit that just took so long to land. You really need to do more of a direct spit in there, otherwise it gives the survivors way too much time to move around. That would have so, been optimal. And a massive tri cap going on there as well. Yeah, that would have been great. They could have burned a huge number of cans, but uh, nothing gonna happen. And looks like after the group going to split up, they're getting most of the uh, covered motel cans right here. This could actually be a great time. If they can get these in, Coach still pouring solo on the generator. Spitter is up, but uh, they've only got a 2-2 right now. All spawns are up, and so they really just need to protect these cans at generator. Coach just going to keep pouring, keep pouring. That is a pounce landing right there, but the spit's already been picked, actually. Charger went around for a bit of delay, but he's going to get gunned down as well. There's going to be another four cans um, for it's the survivors. Just... They do have actually five cans on generator right now. Last one coming in from Nick right there. Uh, they need to get these boomed people out of the way and try to get these pours quickly. Put my proxy in for a third one. Those are the last two cans. They do pipe out, so that'll give them the uh, respite they need to get that final can. And they do get it in with a really respectable time as well. 432. Indeed, much better than we saw last round. Uh, I don't remember exactly what we saw. I think it was uh, about we make three. It's about 3.36 and about 3.20 odd. 3.50 so, and 3.30, something like that. I mean, my, my knowledge of numbers is pathetic. <laughs> yeah, it was 3 something anyway, so this is about a minute better time uh, than we saw on that last round. So after the group, definitely playing a more aggressive survivor round. And it's going to be up to them to uh, keep We Make Your Rage from playing there so quickly. We have not seen that boomer pop in yet. Uh, same standard split as we've been seeing before, but you know, no boom or anything to slow down the survivors right here. So they should be able to just go pretty gung-ho about this. There's only a 2-2 setup still. Here comes the boom. Gonna get a single boom right there, not gonna move any cans around. And it looks like Rochelle and Ellis are gonna go up top right here. Not bad, but oh, going for this quick burn right here. That is definitely- wow! What a nice last second save by Ray. That was so close to being a burn and that would have been at least two cans lit plus a lot of damage. But Raven manages to get that can. I have to say that was the last possible moment for him to grab it. How long did it actually take for the cans to respawn after the burn? Is it about five seconds, six seconds? I, I think it's 20 seconds actually. 20? Jesus, I didn't realize it was that long. It's, it's pretty long, so uh, it might be a little less than that. I'm sure question marks could tell us a lot better than me. And this jockey, going in. yeah, this jockey is keeping Illuminati from taking this cane in the room though, so wasting a lot of time right there. SI doing a good job not springing their attack too early. They're making the survivors delay quite a bit as they go for these. I believe Hunter and Jockey have both been chipped though. Uh, it's actually definitely has. I can't see Hunter though. There's a lot of delays. That boom coming out is going to bring in a lot of common, but now all they've got is this 2-2 setup here with the spit. Jockey going to go for it soon. They do land the jock. They do land the pounce right there. That's a huge amount of separation. And Rochelle's going to be hard-pressed to get any sort of a clear onto this. Does pipe get the clear onto the hunter. It's hoping for a magical pipe bomb to uh, save everything. I think these are... Wow, they still, they've forgotten that can up top. This is Ooh, not going to be a win, I don't think, for We Make Your Rage. They did pretty well, but honestly, those last few can grabs just taking a lot of time in the last can. By the time they get that in, they're probably only going to be about 420 or something at most. Oh, and the pull right there! Even greater delay. Nick yeah, getting kind really of a slow clear. It's amazing how much, you know, like one three-second cap can uh, affect the overall time.
There is another attack coming in. Hunter gets a, an 8 damage bounce as well for a delay, but the final can goes in. So 4 12. It's, it's yo yo wins back and forth so much. I mean, the first round relatively close, not much in it at all. Second round for both teams, we see much more uh, formidable times going out. But um, it seems that those uh, those separation caps really do a lot of damage when the uh, hunting rifle isn't in sort of. Um, yeah, in yeah. a perfect position already. Yeah. I have to say, uh, after the group did a great job managing their SI, choosing attacks at good times for that round, um, they managed to get a lot of delay. But We Make Your Rage kind of getting sloppy on their path choices. They could have taken that round, but uh, they dropped all of their survivors off. They kind of forgot about that last can they had in a side room, side room together. And play order has changed here, I believe. Which means we have different cappers right now. We actually have a 3-1. Oh that could be so much more helpful. Ooh, putting in a spit play very early right here, but Nick should be able to get that save. I'm actually very confused right now. Did we make your rage? No, they could not have won that last round. Did they win the first round? Okay. Wow, I don't know how I screwed that up. So yeah, scores are one and one right now. A lot of cans coming in for we make your rage at this point. Um, but they need to make sure they don't get slowed down on these pours because there are a lot of cans with burn potential up right now. They are sending Ellis to get these uh, side room cans instead of Kaluminati, and is no no can drop is going to be played right there. Wow, nice intercept with that hunter. Um, but you know that's going to be a hard cap to clear with that smoker up there. It does finally get cleared. Luckily, Ellis did toss the cans down, so there shouldn't be too much of a time delay. With Gmail, it was being a bastard and locked me out of my own email account. <laughs> For sure. Um, they still have to get the last corner can, I believe. But other than that, pretty much everything on the map has been grabbed at this point, making pretty good time. And there goes a charge right through that spit. Two cap actually landing in the generator right here. Ellis not right getting now. a very clear. Wow. This is going to be a huge amount of damage at the very least. Looking to be pretty good delay as well. Kaluminati is going to get in cap. Was very good delay. I mean, once that uh, the double cap landed, the hunter got a separation pull as well on um, Zoe, who was running around. Sorry, it's Zoe, that's Rochelle. Uh, throwing in cans and trying to bring that uh, last can into the proximity of the generator got capped as well, so a lot of damage went out. And of course, there was about, I'd, I'd say, almost 20 seconds worth of delay. I mean, without the cans being poured as well, even more on top. Delay going in between uh, the can pulls. Indeed, but last can coming in right here, making a 433 time, which is not bad. But uh, it really means that uh, on their infected half, they're going to have to get at least a burn of some sort or something to make uh, after the group get delayed. Still pretty good round from We Make Your Rage, and early boom, pre-spawning in a very interesting spot. Going to get popped, but uh, Survivor's slowing down just a little bit to try to get that. <laughs> it's definitely a very cute boomer spot. Survivors having no problem. They're going to choose to split up right here. SI aren't even looking for it. Uh, they do already have a spitter, so I'm not quite sure what Question Marks is telling us about in chat. We do see three cap, no charger. It's going to be Hunter, Jockey, Smoker, along with that spit. And they need to just pick the right time to go for this, which is probably going to be, I usually think it's a good idea to go when the cans get stacked up on the motel sign. So anytime now would be great. And here comes the hit. So many cans stacked up in that corner. There is a pounce and spit landing. Cans getting thrown into the spit. Survivor's just scattering like crazy to try to get him out of that. And a huge amount of damage goes in onto Rochelle, but somehow they managed to juggle those cans out. Like you said, you know, that's what they wanted, a massive burn. Indeed, but they did not get anything. Spitter actually getting picked right here, so Survivor's going to split up and go for a lot of cans right now. Definitely a close game, as you can see. I mean, it's turning out to be a really interesting game, because, I mean, you were saying yourself, you know, Motel isn't one of the more fun ones to, uh, to spectate. It seems thus far, I mean, there's a lot of good double caps going on. Indeed, and we are seeing a separation play onto Rochelle up there, but she gets the M2 and gets out of that room so fast. Huge number of pipe bombs coming out from both teams. A lot of cans around the generator. Yeah, they really need to get these pours in more efficiently. I don't think they're really covering Coach all that well. He is on a shot, I guess, but 
Still very slow right here, and a separation pull going to be going in. Jockey does land, pull is cleared, and the pounce finally does land. But yeah, uh, after the group, I'm not really sure. They should be able to win this round, I think. But that spit, oh wow, great spitter pick by Brain right there. Going to keep any final delays from happening, and you this is so it, close. I'm not sure, actually. They, they do, take do it. by just about three seconds. So it is going to go 2-1 in favor of after the Groot right now. We make your rage really, I think they basically need to do more on their infected house. Uh, I mean, 4 minutes 30 seconds is not a bad time for either team. But um, they need to get these burns or something. You know, honestly, they probably should have had like a 3 or 4 can burn that round. But uh, after the Groot just did a great job juggling those cans into spit. It seems that um, like even though the scores are relatively close, I mean, you know, that round is only really two second difference between them. But I think it's the uh, the special infected delay that when the delay actually comes in, which really uh, adds to the amount of time it takes for the survivors to get uh, all those cans in. Indeed. And one really big hit, and you see the survivors essentially losing ten seconds worth of pouring, which is about two, almost three cans. As a result, you know, it costs them about th uh, thirty odd seconds in the overall score. We, we do, do see a spit very quick, quick spit play. That's actually going to be a nice burn. We make your rage losing two cans right there. Separation pull finally does get cleared. Um, and so we're probably going to see somebody split up and go for those cans that got burned. But um, they're having to, they're actually being delayed on their juggles in here because of that huge pile of fire. Yeah, but of course those two cans as well come from quite a distance away. Indeed, they have respawned. It's two closer overpass cans, but that's still, that's two different directions to go to pick up those cans again. So it's going to be hard to say when the survivors are actually going to choose to go back for them. That is a, an opportune area as well for the SI to work on that massive separation. Indeed, and it looks like SI mostly going to wait for the uh, the top room here with two cans. They do have a spitter, they've got smoker charger there. But the real danger with that room, uh, if you're going to be playing infected, is you can't really go for a burn there. Going to get that charge to land, but smoker gets popped and it's pretty quick clears right there. Survivors gonna are going to have to spawn as well. Oh well. Well, at least that means he's still alive. But uh, survivors are gonna have to split up like crazy and get these other two cans in quick. Thankfully, they won't have anything. Stand. Well, they do have a hunter now, but um, if they've been a little bit quicker going for that separation, I mean, they had no cappers up, just that spitter running around to sort of try and stop the survivors getting those massive separation can. Ooh, Nick land, making a bad decision to try to jump off right there to dodge this hunter, and that's actually gonna, gonna be a can. Burn. Wow, great play by after the group. On top of that, I have to say, Ravelop making a bad decision. He should have just stayed up on top of the bridge. Rochelle can clear him from anywhere he is up there. So yeah, that's really going to infect the survivor's time. They just have to wait for that one can to respawn. They're going to lose this round on that alone. The they certainly could. It has been thrown down, but I think with these, by the time they get that second can in and after this one goes in, I don't think they're going to have enough time to actually uh, take the round on this one. Well, we, we still have to wait and see after the group play their round, so uh, we could see de some delays, some similar delays from We Make Your Rage. There goes the poor. Oh, Coach choosing not to finish the poor, and he's going to get punch delayed quite a bit right here. Nick not really doing a great job of covering. Coach is just going to sit there and take it, and wow, this is actually a terrible amount of delay. We Make Your Rage. separation pull going off at the back as well. Indeed, but this is the last can, 3 minutes and 44 seconds. If they had just uh, gotten in there, if he could have dropped the can, killed the charger, killed the boomer, and gotten, you know, an extra 15 seconds or so, I'd have to say. But, uh, I don't uh know yeah. What went on with that last attack? I mean, that charger was just set, constantly fisting him away. Not, not Wait, a, 130 is not fool, it's 130 now. It's about 340-ish. Uh, yeah, 345, I think it was, 344, I don't know. Either way, Survivor's actually picking a different path this time after the group switching things up and they're going to go for Motel first. You know, when you need to... It, I mean, it's not a four minute time they have to beat, but uh, it's not a terrible time either, so... We're gonna have to see how this path works for them. Hunter getting dead stopped by two in the side and taken down very quickly. Uh, it's like maybe gonna go for some sort of a burn play right here, but they've only got a 2-1 right now with Smoker. 
lot of cans about to go in though. They actually went for the. Um, There's the actually one can separated that they could actually burn right now, but not noticing it with that spitter. Here comes a pull, and spit is gonna go in on the generator, but it's not gonna do more than maybe delay. Not even gonna delay. Ooh, they threw a can into the spit though, but Rochelle is on top of that. <laughs> she does take some damage from it though, pretty considerable amount. Uh, a lot of horde moving in, but survivor's gonna move for the long cans at this point. Boy, I really would have liked them to s like to see uh, we make your rage take that spit onto the separated can. Oh, the spitter is quite chipped, and uh, these pre-spawns are not good. Uh, it basically means that after the group knows exactly where they're going to have to hit at. A lot of cans coming in as well now. Boomer going to look for a quick boom right there. Not even going to land, going to get dead stopped quite a bit. Oh, he does get two boom on top right there. But the spitter has been picked off already, so now it's just up to this hunter and this boomer to do anything at all. The boom is still standing on that can as well, looking to approximate off in a different direction, but the uh, whole fight gets shot again and then popped. Pipe bombs being deployed. This is pretty much all of the cans from the map. And uh, We Make It Rage is just going to have one more chance to do, a, and they basically do need a burn right here. They do have that spinner now, though. They need to go very quickly, but Nick blocking a lot of spawns. Spinner finally getting the spawn. But pretty much all of the cans are gone. The smoker does get a pull. We do see a can lit up right now, and it does get the light. We make you rage. Might have actually that might actually win the round for them. Uh, we'll have to see what can that was. It was one of the really far back on uh, cans as well, like right back at the highway. Indeed, Survivor's splitting up a bit to try to get close to that can wherever it may spawn. And... Oh, it's actually uh, billboards. Indeed, billboards overpass. They need to get it in within the next 20 seconds or so in order to take this win. Cap is going to go all over that as well. Good job Indeed. of a spawn blocking, but I mean, they just need to stop that can going, and that's all they need to do. They do put the boom on the can holder, but it's not going to do much. He's going to toss it in there. They don't have a burn or anything, so it's all about delays at this point. They need to wait as long as they can with these cappers. They do get the pounce right there. Charger getting the cap onto Coke. Wow, repeated stumbles around right here, and it looks like Ellis is getting the poor. Oh my gosh. Did he get it in time, though? I'm not sure. I believe that We Make Your Rage took that round by less than a second, and it's unfortunate that we're not going to see exactly what the times were. It looks like three... I don't even know how to interpret that, but it was about 3.45 from We Make Your Rage as well. So that was absolutely huge. Great job doing those final delays by We Make Your Rage, and of course that uh, pull and spit is absolutely key. So this is going to be the final round for this map. If We Make Your Rage can win this round, we will be seeing Sugar Mill action. Enjoy the Sugar Mill. And here comes that Boomer going to sack, but absolutely getting nothing right there. We do see a 3-1 right here. Pull actually getting onto Ellis right there. Charger looking for the intercept. He's just going to take the distance charge, which is often a very good hit. Jockey going to get shut down though. So this isn't going to be more than a light delay right here. I don't imagine Ellis is going to get too hoarded. They got that double cap as well. That would have been a brutal separation. I mean, you could you wouldn't be able to clear that, uh, clear that smoker from the other side either, where the other two cans were. That you have to basically go all the way around to clear them. Meanwhile, Coach juggling actually a lot of cans in by himself. We don't see a spitter up yet though. Um, just a boomer at this point, which does not bode well. It's probably going to be a two-two. Could be a 3-1 with Boom, and Boomer going in, gonna try to get some proxies with those cans, but Rochelle actually grabs it and stops him from uh, launching that last can. And the Spit, spit is up, they really need to land something with this. Spit does land on the generator, but all the cans getting taken out very quickly. There's a separation cap by that Hunter, but once again a very quick clear. Bit of goes to save itself as well, but uh, there's a lot of cans around that uh, generator area. Indeed, and commons are no longer aggroed onto anyone in particular. This is going to delay the pours a good amount, I think. Nick getting shafted by them calling as he tries to pull. We did just see a spitter pick by uh, Ellis on the other side of the map. But Survivor's not really making the greatest time on these pours. Um, they've got a lot of motel cans to get as well. Yeah, so it looks like the SI are going to try and save their um, last sort of big hit. Ooh, Boomer getting uh, caught out there as he tries to pull behind the generator. But it looks like every, the, the SI are going to bank on these last two cans in the uh, top left. Indeed. And I think uh, 
Survivor's taking it pretty cautiously right here, not trying to get very fast times, which uh, could be deadly on the very last round of Motel right here. They have five more cans to get, and it looks like Smoker was going for a pull right there, but completely whipped. Charger and Jockey are going to have to do something on this right here. I don't think they've really got much at all. Jockey getting M2 killed right there. Charger just going to do stumble. The cans are down as well. That's pretty much it. It looks like after the Groot is going to be making a four minute and some time. Charger coming for this last delay, but the Boomer does stumble him. Wow, and his charge getting intercepted by Toad. So, it's 417. Really Right towards the end, with only five cans remaining, it didn't look like they were actually going to get there with you know a substantial time, but they do bring it straight back into the four minute mark as well. You know, 417 going out on that, yeah, yeah, pretty formidable time. So, uh, we make your rage is gonna have to make sure their path is fast and they do not lose any cans for this. Come on, let's go. One good, uh, one good burn could uh, turn the tides, indeed, that would result in the match as well, wouldn't it? It would be the match, yeah. So, if uh if we make your rage, can't get 417 or better. That will be the match for after the group. I got this one. Moving pretty quickly to get these. Nice single boom actually going out right there, but a boom is a boom. Unless it's a duck, or whatever that phrase is. I guess there's not really a phrase like that. <laughs> I'm thinking of the commercial that's like, a scrub is a scrub. Or no, a wipe is a wipe, unless it's a scrub. Don't worry about it. But anyway, looking for the spit play right here onto Ellis. The spit actually gets deployed onto Ellis instead, but Zoe, Rochelle not picking up the can. It's two cans burning, Ellis still not clear. And a second burn right there, wow. Could be that crucial. could be a pretty bad delay. Um, survivors, as long as they can keep their pipeline going, they can just keep somebody up there and get those cans once again, since it was just billboard. But uh, Survivor's splitting a lot. Hunter looking to get the separation onto Ellis right here, and he might actually get it on us. Ellis needs to get into a coverable position and fast. He's in a pretty good position now though, Rochelle can clear him from uh, over there that Hunter's lost a uh, really good opportunity. Those two Indeed. cans, all the cans are down. Yeah, they still have the corner one in uh, Motel to grab, but they've made great time getting the rest of them. They really need to take out these SI and then go back for that corner as quickly as possible. Comes out of his but it's too long. There is Way a can. too long. Ooh, just caught right on the edge of the spit, but not close enough to uh, go and light in. Survivors need to split up like crazy and get the rest of these cans. They still have to get the one in corner, which nobody is moving on, and the billboard ones that were lost earlier. Hunter trying to get that in cap pounds right there, but it's not going to happen. Ellis just going to completely ignore him and go for these tosses. Nobody is moving for the corner can. going to be a close one. Three cans left to go. They're all down. Indeed, Boomer going in for some delays right there. Uh, they just need to kill off that boomer, honestly, and let somebody else do this pours. Last two cans are in generator area. If they can get these in, they will win the map. 100 pounds being employed. Very nice delay right there. Huge number of stumbles. They need to get these pours in so fast. Coach is pouring. Hunter is finally taken down. They get it. Oh my god. Five, well, six seconds. We make your raid. 423 time over 417. That was so close. Get kicked again now, don't we? Yeah, Kaluminati throwing out that it was a lucky game for them. And this does mean that we are going to go on to the third map. To the sugar mill of justice. I'm, I'm glad we're going to get to see sugar mill. I mean, that was a pretty exciting uh, motel, if anything. I mean, some really close calls there, some really good double caps going on. Absolutely. Yeah, those like last second delays uh, being key on a number of rounds. And just, Three just time. yeah, we make your age barely slipping in with uh, like six extra seconds on that final round. Absolutely amazing. They are very happy about that. And, you know, sugar mill, anything could happen. So, uh. I think for the most part, even We Make Your Rage sort of was saying things that made it seem like they felt like uh, the other team after the group had the upper hand. Um, but you know, anything could happen. This it is not rooftop. Nonetheless, excitable. Indeed, indeed. So, alright, we're going to have some downtime on the team switch map once again.
from it looks from the looks of the chat, it looks like uh, our viewers enjoyed that final round as well. Absolutely, uh, just so close. What a nail biter! I do apologize again for my lack of scavenge knowledge. I just kind of bounce off what Prodigy says and sort of throw in a couple of quips here and there. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's nice to have somebody else who's actually taking calls and stuff. Seems to be going well so far. Definitely a good game to be doing today. Uh, we've seen a lot of scavenge gas, a lot of these matches that have been uh, just absolute stomps, like a team gets three wins in a row on uh, two maps in a row. But uh, today, huge amount of back and forth action going on. One can never argue with them. There's nothing worse than seeing a blowout. Absolutely. Of a numerous cast, it's kind of like, you know, when you've seen sort of one blowout, you've seen them all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then you're just like, all right, we're sitting in server here to watch this team win repeatedly. <laughs> Why are we even casting this right now? But not going to be happening today. And hello to you, Endept. Apparently one of the tournament rules here that I've just been informed of is uh, whoever loses the map has to, gets to choose what side they will play first on the next map. That's an interesting one. So it looks like we will be, after the group, we'll decide whether they're going to they're gonna play Survivor or Infected first. And I don't know what I would pick on a sugar mill. Mm, especially in fact, this is always more fun. Death charge, ledge hangs. Essentially being able to screw people over as they try and uh, climb up the stairs to get to the uh, top can. Indeed. And uh, of course in the opposite direction there can be a lot of good separation plays there. Yeah, for these games, it is uh, it is just based on maps, not based on rounds. I know there's some discussion about that in the chat. Uh, I think for the final for this tournament, they are going to do a win based on rounds. I think it's like first one to five rounds. No, actually, actually, I believe I've been told that it's going to be like a best of seven maps or something. <laughs> something ridiculously long like that. This should be interesting. So what was the whole situation with that uh, Kepler fellow? I did see a, a thread pop up on him on FNA Nation, and of course he is, he is a, a scavenge player. And yeah, well, and, and Taro is always collecting evidence against this guy for whatever reason. And uh, I guess apparently he recently received some back bans or something. And he is on Team IA, who is competing in this tournament. And I believe he has been one of their players competing in uh, most of their matches that they've played, so I'm not really sure what the implications of that are going to be. It's question marks tournament, and uh, I don't know if he's been asked to make any sort of a ruling about it. But you know, if you're backbaned, you probably won't be able to join the server anyway. Yep, there's a couple of people who I do know who are backbaned, or do have bans on record. I can't really remember. <laughs> check my friends list. Hey, hey, mine is not for Left 4 Dead. Mine is for a game I played a long time ago. With, uh... It was Counter Strike, wasn't it? Yep. It's hey, I didn't even really right. play Counter Strike. I was just, I was young, and I said, "Oh boy, I can see through walls and see cool things on players. I want to play with that." And I was young. Some shit shot me through a wall, so I thought, "I'm gonna get this bastard back." <laughs> I wasn't. It wasn't even like that. I just thought hacking was like cool because the programs did cool things. And uh, I joined a server called Test Your Hacks Here, and it was a trap. It's actually a really retarded story that nobody's ever going to believe, but uh, it's true. It was a trap. It test was your a hacks trap. here, ladies and gentlemen. It just said, test your hacks here, and I said, that's the perfect server. That's exactly what I want to do. It was full of, uh, it was full of bots, like fake clients, 
and they were all on like full auto aimbots. So it was just like hackers against bot hackers. And but no, it was not legit. And it looks like teams aren't server right now. ID. I was just choking on a cigarette. Mm. All right. So getting into Sugar Mill server right here. While we do wait for the. Uh... The server to load for me and all that. I do have a musical interlude from Ma, who has currently been singing I Am Her Sunshine. <laughs> See, Jeff, I'm more popular than you. No one likes you anymore. You sit there on camera and I'll take Poor Jeff. Yeah, he falls asleep on the job. <laughs> he certainly does. That was pretty funny. And it looks like map restart vote has been thrown in. Uh, apparently Jazz has really bad ping right here, so I'm not sure if they really want to send it live right now. It looks... no, his ping's just still up high. Uh-oh, Skadios. That's what they say when they have high ping. Plus, side, though, with all the tier twos running around, I get to see all my custom skins. Yeah. Don't even get to see them in campaigns. I get to see them in versus games. Well, scavenge games. Looks like Jazz is paying a little better. Still higher than the rest of his teammates. I think everybody was in green on that last map, so I'm not so sure about this. I believe it was. Alright, so uh, looks like the infected have a. Is this a 2 2 setup? It is a 2 2 setup. And normally we see survivors go onto the silos first. Or actually, I'm not even sure if these count as silos. I believe they do. But there's the quick boom coming out. Not even going to land right there, so not much of a delay on this. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, if the cans are thrown into these little water puddles, uh, as oh wow, Ellis actually knocking the cans down without grabbing them, so they will not be able to be spit on right there. That's actually a very cool move, and they can just leave those cans there as long as they want, basically. Is it, if the cans go into these little water puddles as well, they sort of disappear. Or they they don't disappear, but uh, they can't be spit on. I guess I didn't finish my thought right there. Yeah, as long as the can is completely submerged in water, uh, spit will not burn them. Survivor's splitting up right now. We haven't really seen a uh, full infected attack yet. Oh, we've just seen that boomer sack. I mean, they do have their three cappers now, but the survivors are... No, they are split. They are in a They do split. need to go for this split right now. Hunter, oh, getting blocked by that doorway. Jockey and Hunter really need to get through that door and get in there for that cap. Jockey missing. Hunter dead stop, but the jock does land right there. They are trying to get a wall clear, but that's going to be a burn right there, which is going to be a great delay. They do get an intercepting cap onto Nick as well. Oh, this could actually sense. be not going to be an end cap under a shell. She does manage to get cleared by that fire, but uh, a great delay coming out from We Make Your Rage right there. So survivors, it looks like Rochelle is going to wait there to get those cans, and they finally do respawn. And there's just a spit up for We Make You Rage right now. Not really in a great position for anything at all. He probably should have just died, honestly. There's a lot of cans like, up top to get as well, so I mean, I guess if the survivors, uh, the SI can get a really good setup for that. Yeah, but you know, the spitter is still just so out of position for anything. The only a 2 2 setup right now as well. Gonna lose this boomer. Oh, doesn't even manage to get that boom onto coach. Uh, however, Ellis is splitting off quite a bit by himself. We might be able to see some sort of ledge plays here if the jockey is ready for this. But it looks Most like they're in joined him. Indeed they have. So we'll probably see something. Well, Jockey's pre-spawn, so they're going to have to go for this soon. Rochelle actually getting caught on a common right there, but Jockey not able to take him. And Jockey falls off the side of the map. Going to do a hit later. They don't have a charger right now. Um, but there is a can on the low ground, a couple of them. They might be able to just go for some burn play. Spitter has pre-spawn, and Nick is looking for the pick. They are going for that burn right there, but Rochelle can grab the can before they can get anything on that. We'll have to go back up and get that other can as well. Any one of the cans from, uh... Indeed, but uh, as you can see right here, Nick is just going to make that jump and take it, so it'll come in very quickly. 
Oh, actually getting a nice cap right there, but Spitter not able to do anything on it. It's going to be a last second spit delay, I believe, if he can actually find an angle. But no, he's going to be picked. Um, so just, just, yeah, pretty good time from the survivors going up the sugar mill, at least. Um, they had some delays on the other direction, but 348 is not bad. Yeah, I think that, um, I think the reluctancy to hit from the SI really sort of helped them out, because when they did finally get that, that first initial hit in after the boomer sack, they got a lot of time delay and a burn off it as well. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, as long as We Make Your Rage can take those bar cans without getting any burns in, they should be able to take this round, I think. The boomer spawning up in the same place again, trying to get the uh, survivors as they come up the ladder. He is causing a little bit of delay. They really want to bait him out, and a nice pop by Jazz who is blocking in the backside right now. It's a pretty good survivor position. I know a lot of teams like to do that. If you have the luxury of having an extra player over there, it's a great way to block a bunch of spawns and cover your players going for those top cans. And it looks like Hunter going for a quick cap right here. Spitter not really getting the spawn. They need to grab that extra can that is burning right there. Nick trying to grab it, but no, that's going to be a burn right there. It is one of them. Indeed, it is going to be one of the closer cans that gets burned. Um, but it's going to give survivors pretty much a free run to these farther cans right here. There's a jockey up to stop them. There's two survivors there, so I mean, that's not going to cause much of a hindrance, and the jockey does get m 2 and shut down as well. Indeed. Honestly, he probably should have waited to get some help right there, or maybe a better separation cap. Uh, and spit delay being employed on the generator right there, but that's not really going to slow down their pipeline at all. Uh, Rochelle is actually separated right now, but as I'm not set up to go in on it, they have a 2-1 right now with Hunter. Not really ideal at all. They might be able to get some sort of a burn right here, though. I got this one. I got it. And there is a smoker up as well. That spitter's still up as well. You can see the survivors sort of leaving them cans in the water because they know that spitter is there. Indeed, and the spit does go in on generator. Not landing onto anything at all, though. And they're going to just let Ellis do these pours, I guess. Or maybe Jazz. Yeah, Jazz is going to do pours. Meanwhile, the survivor's going to move up to the top. Making a really good time as well. Just Indeed some, uh, they are. three cans up top to get. Now they are going to be doing a 3-1 split for this. Oh, nice double boom landing. If a smoker can get some sort of a ledge pull right here, this could be huge. But uh, either way, it's a pretty good amount of delay. Pipe bomb being employed. And there is a pull right there, but it goes on to Ellis, who's completely covered by that uh, other ledge. And Jackie pre-spawning on the final cans right here. I'm not sure... If there's a very good point to that, he does land the cap, but it's not going to be very much. Uh, maybe they're expecting the survivors to throw some cans down here, bullheadedly, and they do throw one down, but Rochelle is on it, and that spitter is not going to have anything at all. Do with that charger, but unfortunately, the survivors are already downstairs. Yeah, as long as they cover these pores well enough, uh, this is going to be We Make Rage's round. And they do, Coach is blocking that charger spawn so well back there. 4 minute, 15 second time. Beating 348 by almost 30 seconds. Very respectable time. I mean, I think that double cap really sort of helped them get that time as well. And after that can burn, they suffered no can. Well, they suffered one can burn at all, but it was a, a can that was relatively easy to just pick up and go from. Indeed. And it gave them, you know, them going for that burn, let the survivors get the other far cans in that direction so much easier because of SI being dead. So we'll have to see if after the Groot is going to change. Uh, their survivor strategy for one, but I think their infected strategy is more what needs to change there. And actually getting a pull up top, Rochelle boomed as well, but uh, survivor's not really getting delayed too much. I got this one. traditional M2 of the can up top as well, but one of them did get picked up and thrown. Indeed. There is Hunter Spitter up, and they could go for a burn right here. This would be a great time to go for a burn. Hunter has the intercept. Oh no, he actually gets M2'd off, and great can saves by Coach and Ellis right there. Almost a triple burn as well, that would have been really devastating in terms of uh, time delay. Indeed, that would have been absolutely awful, but uh, Coach managing to get that M2 onto the Hunter, really clutch that he got that. While throwing cans. Separation pull right there, but uh, I don't think it's really going to affect all that much. Coach is going to have to stop pouring and go for it. Rochelle managing to self-clear onto that jockey, I believe, unless that was a pipe bomb clear. Um, the man's best friend. Indeed. She's getting hoarded here a little bit. But Ellis is finally coming to help. Oh, she might have just lost that can. Underneath that area, she's going to need some help to grab it. 
Wow, this is actually terrible for after the Groot right here. They're going to have to pop that can, and they're spending so much time just trying to... Oh, wait. Or Nick will just go up there and grab it instantly. Nick will just clutch it after like 0.2 seconds while Rochelle looks at it and thinks, what am I doing? Yeah. Maybe maybe Nick's arms are longer or something. Long arm oh, can grab. Fix it, uh -huh. you fix it. So everybody's splitting up right now to get some more cans. Um, And it looks like they're going to leave these cans underwater right here. Both of them are submerged pretty well, I think. Which is not a bad decision since they should really just uh, try to get these top cans as quickly as possible. Jockey trying to go in and get a grab real quick right there, but he misses. Gonna try to land on Ellis, and he does get the land right there. Um, but honestly, it's it can be walled and cleared before he can get anything resembling a ledge cap. But uh, sitting on them cans as well, looking to pop them off. Oh yeah. Still I don't. Or something. Yeah, I don't see how the survivors would make the mistake of punch it, hitting him though. And as I could scratch him to death, but that's a lot of oh, scratches. And what did falls. Nick just do? Brain falling off of the ledge right there. And that spit, I don't know if that can is submerged. Apparently they Ooh. were. The boomer does finally get popped. One can actually landing into the spit right there, but no, it's submerged once again. So no burns coming out. Uh, honestly, yeah, though, after the group, not making great time at this point. Achievement. What achievement is that? Head Headhunter? Head uh, killing uh, 100 common with all the melee weapons. <laughs> Ten. Oh, yes. ten of each with ten melee, though. like every melee kill ten thingies. Oh, I see. So, at 339 times from after the group, very similar to the first round, actually slowed by uh, about eight seconds, though. Yeah, I think a lot of it really didn't help when uh, Brain took a nosedive off the top of that um, sugar mill either to the second floor and just got himself in capped. Yeah, that was definitely bad, um, and they had some good delays earlier, honestly. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. We make Rage, if they can just play Survivor as well as they did on that first round, uh, this should be pretty easy for them. I mean, I remember they got like 4.15 or something that first round. Boomer going for that delay real quick. And he actually does land the boom. Jazz once again sitting in that back position, getting there very early, and Nick actually getting slowed down by some commons right here. So this isn't going to be a very fast early grab. Hunter looking for the separation pounce, but getting taken out by Illuminati very quickly. <laughs> he gets those cans off at the top of the silo in a single shove. Style points. Honestly, Smoker could have gone for a separation pull right there, uh, but choosing not to. They're just going to wait for the survivors to run in that direction. And I think what they need to do right here is just use a shot, get these canes in quick so they can start moving for more cans if they want to get a good time. Looks like Coach did take that shot, and he should be able to pour very quickly. Uh, Kane's not exactly in optimal positions for him yet, though. There they go. Very nice poor time. Single boom landing onto Nick on the other side of the map. There comes the separation pull, but it gets self-cleared right there. And Spit gonna be employed on top of that jockey, but wall clears coming in so quickly. Uh, however, he's gonna have to sit there and wait out that Spit. Good amount of damage onto Ellis, but um, honestly, they didn't really get much of a delay off of that. Uh, got the cans out there as well, but at least now they do have the charger for that um, for the stairwell. That's certainly That's true. Actually... I think this is the first time we're seeing a charger available for that uh, for that hit so far this game. For that choke point, I should say, and we'll probably see a boomer sack here pretty quickly. He's looking for the spawn there, unable to get it though. They should honestly so. just use it for the choke point here. They do have a really good setup for it. I mean, they've got the smoker for the ledge hangs, the charger for the in-cap charge, and the boomer as well to just Indeed. cause mass confusion. I think they should really go soon, though. Charger looking for that charge, but he gets cleared off by those AKs so quickly. Meanwhile, boomer has been popped, and it's up to a hunter and a smoker to do anything at all right now. Smoker gets cleared, and hunter is alone. He's just going to try to maximize whatever delay he can get up here. Not gonna get much at all, maybe one one pound, which might get cleared from below. He does go down uh, to keep himself alive. The last three cans are en route to the generator. The final spawns are coming up as well. They do have a spitter. They still have that hunter running around. You know, this is only three cans though, and uh, 
if the survivors don't get them in very soon, they could actually lose this round. Here comes these final delays in right here. Getting pretty good time on these pours. Spit misses at the generator though. Rochelle is going to start pouring. And she is getting common, but it should be in. Four minute time. They do take the win on that round by 20 seconds. Maybe cutting it a little closer than uh, they would have liked to, but it's looking like We Make It Rage is a lot better at uh, Sugar Mill than they seem to have been at Rooftop, at least. Yeah, they're keeping it close, but um, they seem to have like a lot more uh, pace to them when it comes to collecting the cans, which um, the group have suffered with quite a bit. I mean, just getting there quickly and getting out quickly. See a lot of people, like a lot of teams, going there separated, getting uh, common blocked in, and then as a result, wasting time, essentially. Indeed, yeah. We Make Your Rage definitely a lot more efficient. And actually leaving that boomer up from We Make Your Rage, which is going to be used to delay them. Or delay the infected hits at the very least. Boomer has finally been popped, and now there's just Hunter, Smoker, and Spitter up right here. Might actually go for a burn play, which they could honestly do at any time right here. But uh, it looks like they're going to choose not to. Meanwhile, survivors are splitting to go after those long cans. They need to get that Hunter and Smoker in there quickly. Um, Nick is moving in for the cover. There's that spitter there as well. Mocha does get his pull, but he gets insta cleared by Rochelle. Self clear. Indeed. Hunter gonna go for this cap right here. Spit being employed onto some further away cans, but he actually splits the difference between the two and gets nothing. Rochelle does get capped right there and an intercept onto Ellis. This could actually be a lot of damage. Jockey is out of line of sight, so this is looking to be a pretty good delay coming up from We Make You Rage. Yeah, once again, uh, after the Groot, not really getting these cans over here efficiently. This seems to be the major slowdown point for them. Round yeah, after round. A good sort of 15-20 seconds in this area getting a couple of cans out, and it usually, well, so far it's punished them. You see a coach rushing off there by himself with a smoker in pursuit. Which oh, gets wow. Him, gets the hang. Bad move by coach right there. And smoke yeah. is still up as well. His tongue is about halfway at the moment. That's ample enough to get... There's so much delay going in here. They've got a couple more cans in. But they're so separated. There's two inside, one hanging. Hunter trying to get that pounce outside. That does get cleared. Uh, but, you know, that smoker's got his tongue again, and Ellis is the only one in that area. If the smoker can just get his cap onto Ellis, it'll be a good delay. He's going to try to go for a ledge cap, I think. Uh, he doesn't really have much else. Nick gets the clear very quickly. That's cost them a lot of time though, I mean, with Coach out of action, with other cappers running around as well, it's just been one of those situations where the survivors have lost another sort of 10-15 seconds off their overall uh, time. Indeed. The time and... to get these three cans in, I'd be surprised if they make it up to the three minute mark even. Yeah, well there's actually five cans coming in right now, and that did sort of keep the SI away from hitting them for that choke point. But here comes this, the SI going for their final hit right now. Actually a bit early, I think. Um, Survivor's gonna get these cans in. That's a lot of cans to get in. They're actually gonna hit over four minutes, or about four minutes with this. It's a very good recovery, actually. The coach goes down just as he gets that last can in. They do make it up to 4.8, which is a lot more respectable than the uh, previous rounds. I mean, for a, for a second, I, I would have been surprised if he didn't get three minutes. I thought there was just the three cans left, but it was actually five. Yeah, indeed. You know, it can be sort of random on Scavenge, because, uh, like, from our point of view, as Battle is pointing out, they, it seemed like that ledge cap was going to be a huge delay and all these sorts of things, but uh, the ledge cap actually happened early because the survivors were still bringing in cans from uh, the far section when that went in. And so by the time they got up there and picked up Coach, there were just so many spawns down and whatnot that it actually helped the survivors' time a little bit. Uh, I mean, obviously their path was not very ideal overall, but um, that sort of helped them cut corners and make up for it. So things can be a little random in scavenge, for sure. And it looks like spit play being employed right here, but it is it is going to hit one can. Another can being thrown into spit, but Hunter is not going to get that intercept. I got this one. Um, so a lot of chipped SI up right now for after the group. So at least they're not dead, but uh, survivors are going to rush for these two long cans right here. There is a jockey up as well. They could go for a two cap at any point right here. It would be a great idea to do it soon, but Coach is up, and he is going to get that smoker clear. Meanwhile, Pounce does land onto Ellis, but that's going to be cleared as well. Many M2s going in on that poor Hunter and Jockey inside <laughs> that room. You know, you do have to be careful in scavenge sometimes. Because uh, if you're getting too hasty trying to clear a Hunter or something, you can always shoot the can right under it. 
I guess that wasn't really the case in that room, but uh, still does happen a lot. I just noticed the survivors don't actually have the uh, the top three close can. Because they're still sitting there, it looks like Rochelle is going to run for them right now. Yeah, they seem to be getting them canned a lot easier because, I mean, you can be cleared from near enough anywhere around. It's um, lower cans that seem to be the biggest hindrance for the uh, survivors in this area. Indeed, Alice getting a nice can save right there, as there was a spit attempt. And Hunter is going to save, probably going to try for some sort of a despawn, or at least just going to follow the survivors a bit. No, he's going to get taken down. I see a lot of separation going in, but um, it doesn't look like any SI have spawned up yet to capitalize on it. Ellis is up top by himself, and he is being uh, pursued by, I believe that's Coach down there, it is Coach. You know, We Make You Rage, uh, actually not making great time for this round. They kind of, having to go back and get those three extra cans delayed them a lot, and this is actually going to be a great delay right here. Wow, actually that's a jump charge! On to Ellis out there, it's actually an in cap charge, so the charge is going to have to sit there on it for quite some time. Um, but you know, five cans left. Coach tossing them all down very quickly. Smoker almost getting that separation pull. I got this one. It's hard to say if they, they should be able to win, but they need to get these canes in very quickly. They need to get a shot in or something. They need to throw this pipe bomb. They need to do absolutely everything right now. Pipe does go out. There is no shot. So with only five cans left, I don't think they're going to win this round. They cannot, they literally cannot pour them in fast enough. But it is going to be, nope. That last delay is going to be way too much. Yeah, they're not going to take it, it seems. The only person who can do it is Nick, and that smoke was poised to try and take him. Coach does get the intercept. He piles the smoke in. That is going to be the round. They do make it up over the three minute mark. Last cat isn't going in. It does go in, 332. <laughs> so yeah, um, after the group playing their infected much better on this round, they managed to maximize their delays with their SI over and over again, and of course that death charge helped out a lot. So now We Make Your Rage is going to have to play a faster survivor round this time for sure. Nice boomer pap, always a good opening with that right there. And it looks like going for a separation play already. Going to try to get a quick burn right here. I don't know how it could have happened though. Oh, that jockey is going to land. Coach does save the can though. But all the survivors had to drop down. Uh, this is exactly what we saw last round. Where after the group has actually forced the survivors to drop down very quickly. And somebody is going to have to climb all the way back up to get those top three cans once again. Pipe bomb being employed in this long two area. Not really getting the comments taken out though. Another one having to go in. It does cause a considerable amount of delay as well, but it looks like they are going to get about five cans in. Uh, well, actually closer to seven cans in, like, all at one time now. They do... Oh, never mind, Coach. Yeah, never mind, Coach is still up there. But Rochelle was up top and then dropped down before getting the three cans. Indeed, yeah. Survivors, it seemed like they were splitting up a lot right there, but there is no spit to go in right now. Nice two cap in the back with the smoker and the charger. Not even getting cleared very quickly. There's so many cans out right now. Survivors really need to employ a pipe bomb and just get these cans in very quickly. They can't afford to waste any more time fighting SI in comments. Rochelle is starting the pours, but I don't think she's on a shot or anything. Nobody actually has a shot right now. Coach getting pulled once again. Yeah, this isn't good. Uh, I believe Coach, he's just like a tick away from being slow. There he goes. So yeah, this is actually not very fast from We Make Your Rage right now. It took so much time to get those canes and so much time to pour them as well. We're seeing a lot of separation going in onto Nick right here. Those three cans left. They only have like a two cap to stop them. Just the jockey, the boom has already been popped. Just the spitter as well now. Indeed, but you know, without that boom going in, it actually kind of, it's a little more dangerous for the survivors since there's, it's more of a common infected minefield all over. Everybody's going to get hit by those common. Everybody has to look out for him. The spitter's gonna try for this uh, burn on these cans. Oh, well, wow. Gets picked, though. Nice move by Kaluminati getting that pick so quickly. Hunter Jockey going for caps there, but not landing anything at all. Coach should honestly probably just go ahead and start pouring. He is trying to do the cover, though. 
and he does get pulled in the back. Dangerous. Mm. I mean, they've already ticked below three minutes. Oh, certainly have. To go in. So it looks like they're just barely going to get four minutes if they do manage to. These last second delays can take it down under four. And wow, 359.80. So yeah, not a very fast round from where we make your age. It sort of looks like after the Groot has figured out how to play Infected against them, finally. They definitely seem to pull it together on their Infected round. I mean, they're causing a lot of delay. I mean, the time started off really well for we make your age, and it's just, it, they just seem to be ticking down, you know, 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there. Absolutely. It sort of seemed like on those last couple of rounds, we make your age wasn't really uh, figuring out when they should be going for pours and when they should be grabbing cans and all sorts of things like that. And quick boom in here once again. But it looks like, no, We Make Your Rage is spawning up. They're going to go for a burn play right here. That's definitely going to be a burn. Um, at least a one burn. And Spitter does get picked down. But that was one of the up top cans. However, uh, survivors are still sitting up top. As long as Rochelle stays up there, it won't be much of a delay. And she is indeed going to stay there. However, they aren't making a very efficient move towards these long cans. That situation, Meanwhile, you would have thought they would have run for the long cans, started bringing them over while that can respawns, and they would have had a massive amount of cans. Basically, all the cans from that area, which has proved to be one of their uh, weak spots, indeed, in one go. Uh, overall, though, I have to say, after the group, oh, Boomer actually going to land there onto their can pour. That's not very good at all, and it looks like just going to go for a delay hit right here. It's kind of unfortunate because they just now got that spitter. Um, they could actually spit at that huge pile of cans, and they might be able to get something. But uh, no, they're going to opt against it. A lot of cans about to go in there. But, uh, they have to, even though the cans have just started to be poured in. I mean, they did spend a lot of time gathering all them cans into an area. Yeah, they haven't. You know, uh, I talk about a pipeline a lot, and the pipelines between grabbing the cans and pouring them. And honestly, they have not been pouring cans very fast. You know, those cans take a long time to pour. You can't just take that for granted. And they're having to sit here and watch Coach pour in so many cans right now, which is actually a pretty good delay. And look for a multi -cans. Two cans getting spit on, and that's going to be a quad burn probably, unless they can grab that can. It's not going to happen. Wow, this is absolutely terrible for after the group. That is such a huge burn. That is so important for We Make Your Rage right now if they want to be able to take this. And, uh, you know, honestly, that could give them the round, but otherwise, these top hands are going to be taken pretty much without contest by Ellis and Nick right here. I got this one. And, wow, canes are being respawned all over the map right now. I guess there aren't any of the long cans being taken, but they are going to have to get some of those top cans. Ellis going alone to grab those. As you can see, like, just on that massive quad burn that went off, this, the cans are separated so much because you don't know what cans got burned at the process until they respawn again. Indeed, and that is a separation cap on the Ellis, taking him down. So another survivor is going to have to climb up on silos to get that last can. And I don't think, I honestly don't think it's possible at this point. I think We Make Your Raid is going to take this round. What was the time? 3.59? Unless this next can gets in in the next, it's over. Yeah, after the Groot calling GG right now and well played from Kaluminati we're gonna watch them pour in this final can but that is the game wow really nicely played on this map by uh, we make your raid definitely a lot closer yeah you know I mean it was back and forth so much on motel which is absolutely great uh, but this map was almost as one-sided as the rooftop around was I have to say, I thought after the Groot was going to pick it up and be able to bring it back on those last rounds, but that that quad burn was just absolutely terrible for them. Yeah, that's pretty much what set them back. It made them have to basically retrace their steps, go after cans that they didn't have to go out to, uh, go after again. Of course, that one jockey right at the end, which pulled them off as well, really didn't help. Certainly. Submit another survivor to it. So yeah, congratulations to We Make Your Aids bringing it out on the third and final map. And uh, sorry to after the Groot, but you are out of the tournament. And I believe we will see. Yeah, we will see after, or we'll see. We make your rage in another game sometime soon, I'm sure. For that lower bracket. My apologies once again for knowing absolutely jack shit about Scavenge. I just bounce off. <laughs> well, thanks for casting with me. Anyhow, I had a good time. And I hope you guys watching had a good time. 
And uh, I think we'll see you guys next time. Indeed. Good night.